Hey friends, this is Jan Koch with a tutorial on how to make your WordPress site Retina ready. So I'm using a MacBook Pro uh, with the Retina display and as you can see the image on my website does look a bit blurry and we're about to change this right now. Um, Retina displays, to back up a little bit, they have a very high resolution, higher than normal monitors and normal displays. So as you can see, when you look on the text of, on the left hand side, for example, the text is really, really sharp and you might need to turn this video to full HD to see this, but the, you can't, well, you can barely see any pixels in the text. Whereas when you look at this image, it doesn't look as clear. And that is because retina devices need images in bigger resolutions as the normal devices do. The thing is that these Retina versions of your images are bigger in file size, so they take a bit longer to load, which is why what you um, why you don't want to load them on all devices. So basically, in this tutorial, I'm about to share with you how you can upload a normal version of your image and a Retina version of your image, and then have WordPress only load the Retina version of that image on Retina displays where it makes sense and for the other displays, the normal displays, just use the normal version. We'll show you, or I'll show you how to do that right now. So the first step you need to take is to head over to a website that is called retinajs.com which redirects you to this page that you're seeing right now which is uh, emulus.github.io slash retinajs. You can just enter retinajs.com. And this is basically the JavaScript framework that we are about to use. And you don't need to know JavaScript to follow along, and you don't need to know how to code to follow along. I've already prepared all the snippets that you need to do, or that you need to use. And for now, just download the zip file which uh, downloads an archive of the Retina display library and you'll need to unpack that. I'll just do that right now. And in fact, you can see I already downloaded it before. So in this archive, you can see a Retina JS file and a Retina min.js. And we'll, we're about to use this one because that's a bit faster in loading. And we need to embed this into our WordPress site. And to do that, I'm about to go to media and then add new because we'll upload that JS file into our media library. Select the file, downloads our retina, retina min.js. Now it's uploaded and now you want to click on edit to copy the file URL because we'll need that in a later place or in a, at a later time in this tutorial. So I recommend to create a text document or something like that to just copy and paste the URL and just basically park it here so that we can use it later. Now the next step, since we've now uploaded Retina.js, the next step is to actually tell WordPress to use Retina.js. And to do that, you have two ways. You can either, if you're using a child theme, you can go to Appearance and then Editor. And inside the editor, locate the functions PHP. And then you, can, you could paste um, a short code or a, or a code snippet, basically. You could paste a code snippet right here. I'll just do that for you. So this is how it would look basically. This is the code snippet I provide in the post to this tutorial. You can find the code and just copy and paste the code. And what you need to do is to update this URL with the URL that you just saved from the uploaded file. So to do that, I'll go back to my text document, copy that URL and paste it right here. And now if we update the file, WordPress uses the, or loads the Retina JS framework whenever the website loads. So that's pretty neat. The thing with this method is, however, 
if you're not using a child theme and you update the theme, you'll lose this functionality because this file gets overwritten. To avoid this updating issue, I created a plugin that's called Extend Your Site, as you can see right here. You can get the download link from my website or from the show notes below this video. It's not in the WordPress repository currently because it's just a very small workaround and I wouldn't probably even call it a plugin from a developer standpoint. But what this plugin or this tweak lets you do when you click on edit, it lets you add code to the website as you would add it to the functions file of your theme. But if you update the theme or update the website, these changes will persist. So these changes, these codes you add to extend your site, they will be update safe. That's a very important thing. So what you can do is you can just copy and paste the code snippet from my website to this file. Make sure to have the right URL here. So if you don't remember which URL it is to the uh, Retina Min.js file that you uploaded to the media library, go back to the media library, check out the path, check out the full URL to that file that you just uploaded and paste it right here. Also make sure that you have these quotation marks come and right. Let me phrase this in another way. It's very important here that you have these quotation marks and it's not a backtick or something else because um, when it comes to coding, these things are pretty important. And if you just copy and paste the snippet from my site, you should be fine with this. So then if you have this function pasted, you can just update the file. I won't do that as I already created that file in my child theme or this functionality is in my child theme already. So um, having this twice would result in an error, which is why I don't update the file right now. As you can see, I'm now on the home page already and that's because we are done with integrating Retina.js and making our WordPress site Retina ready. So it's really just this one snippet of code that you need to paste into your website and this one file that you need to upload. And as I said in the beginning, I want to make this image of mine retina ready, which means that I need to upload another version of that image to the page or to the media library, more important, and then have WordPress pick the right version for the right screen and the right resolution. So to do that, I created an image or a version of that image that is exactly twice the size. So I went into a tool like pigresize or photor.com and I created a, an image that is exactly twice the dimensions. And I saved that with a very specific name as we'll see in a bit. For now what I'll do is I'll go to edit page now you can see in a bit that I'm using the Visual Composer and all I need to do now is to upload the Retina version of the image. So therefore I'll go to the image container that actually contains the non-Retina version. I'll go to Upload, Upload Files, Select Files and then as you can see right here I named the image Jan underscore Koch at 2 xpng and that is because uh, the original image is Jan underscore Koch dot PNG and using at 2 x and appending that to the original image name before the suffix of the file will tell WordPress that this is the Retina version of Jan Koch dot PNG. So I'll just upload that to the media library I don't even need to include that into the post or page itself, so that's a very important thing. Don't include the Retina version into the post or into the page because WordPress will automatically load it. So I won't go to insert into page right here. I just close this element. I'll close that. And then what I can do is I'll just preview changes. I didn't change anything basically. I just want to see the page. You could just open the page directly and if everything is working, this should now be 
the retina file. And as you can see, I'm just inspecting the element and as you can see right here, it's loading the new file. So that's basically how you make your WordPress retina ready.